Well, while I'm, while I'm waiting for my battery to arrive, I thought I'd do up the wiring on my bike. So you may remember in the previous video where I put all this stuff on my bike, there was a huge bundle of cables here. Well, I'm shortening those. And we're going on here. And see what I've cut and spliced the wires together. I've also tidied up the wiring around here on the motor connections. I've got my soldering iron out. So I can do the work, as you can see, using heat shrink tubing. And for an extra layer of safety, I'm just wrapping that all in tape. I've just realised I've got this thing recording in 4K, so uh, yeah, I'll see if I can edit a 4K video when I get back. Right, that's that done. Also got to do the brake sensor cable. And then I'm just going to take a quick look inside the controller box, make sure everything's alright in there. And then it will be ready for the new battery. There we go. So there's the brake sensor wire. Controller wire. Well, controller cable. Well, um, I'm not just going to leave them flapping about in the breeze like this. Start to wrap up the cable now. Might as well turn the soldering iron off. It's not going to be nice weather for the kids trick or treating tonight because it's Halloween tonight. Weather forecast says it's going to rain heavily, which is my kind of weather. Mind you, it was sunny earlier and it's clouded over now. It's kind of sky I like. Gunmetal sky. Well, I'm just going to continue wrapping this wire now. There we are. Everything wrapped up nicely. Oh, I forgot about the heat shrink that I put on the motor cables. I don't think that's going anywhere, so I'm not going to apply heat to that. Make sure they're nice and firmly connected. Because with only two phases of the motors, three phases work connected, that's not going to go anywhere. Even with the right battery. Well, oh, that's all three motor phases connected. I've also got the speed um, limiter connected. Because I don't intend to go too fast on this. Although with a 48 volt battery, this could probably reach about 30 miles an hour. Going that kind of speed on a, you know, paddle bike could be a bit scary. The only one I haven't connected is the pedal assist, which is this wire here, because I'm not going to be using that. It's either going to be fully motor or fully pedaling. Also, when I've got the 48 volt battery connected, I'll be able to see all three of these lights on instead of just the one that says empty. Well, I'm not taking this thing apart because I just, um, if I do, I'll probably will break something, although I've given each of these wires a tug and none of them come out, so I think it's okay. See, the thing is, earlier, this was, like, right down here and it was just hanging by the wires. So I wanted to make sure that they were all okay. The only one that did seem loose was this one, but it's green wire, but that seemed to stop after a while, so I guess it was just like a lot of slack wire in there. And my right rear light's fallen off. I know where it is. Have to put that back on, but I'm going to put this back in the shed now. Well, now it's back in my messy shed, waiting for the battery. Which is going to go on to here. Okay, could somebody tell me how the hell this just happened? How? 
So you'll have to excuse the mess on the workbench, but what I'm doing right now is I've taken the BMS off and I'm charging each cell one by one, well, each row of cells, you know, because you've got four here in parallel, then another four in parallel, then another four in parallel, and then all those parallel batteries are connected in series, which makes up the full 36 to 42 volts. So, I'm just charging each row individually off my power supply. I've got my voltmeter measuring the voltage, and when that gets to 42.1, I'm going to go on to the next group of cells and see if they are actually holding a charge. So I do want to momentarily power the bike off this battery, just to make sure that, you know, when I push the throttle that the wheels go round. Well, wheel look goes round. Right, so... This is what it's like out here. There's always somewhere, somebody doing DIY. Get mighty sick of it, I can tell you. Anyway, I'm going to connect this battery up because, well, even in its current state, it should still be able to spin the wheel. Before I put the fuse in, though, to prevent anything sparking, I've got a 10 ohm resistor here, and I'm just going to bridge the connections that the fuse would normally bridge, just to charge up the main capacitor in the uh, control box. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just doing it, just uh, servicing it. No idea who that was. Uh, I'll put the GoPro down. Um, I don't really have a, anywhere to put this. I'll have to turn it off when I'm doing this. Right, okay, so it's done. Fuse it in. Let's turn the power on. Well, we have a power indicator. Power indication. I'm just going to turn that. See if it turns. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to remove the um, speed limiter wire. If I can just do that. Okay, I think we're in business.